Ts an inklas au tlawadluan ajugang. We all take care of s an inklas. 180 kilometers off the edge of Haida Gwaii, there is an underwater mountain called Tsan Inklas. The supernatural being rises from the ocean floor, scratching at the surface of the Pacific Ocean. An incredible abundance of marine life is found here, supported by nutrient-rich ocean currents. Tsan Inklas is home to juvenile rockfish, brightly colored anemones, sea stars, and rare and sensitive corals and sponges. This abundance of life is revealed in Haida oral traditions when the flat top of Tsan Inklas was above the waves and a colony of puffins rested on the supernatural being's back. In 2007, the Haida Nation and the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans agreed to manage the seamount together to ensure that this unique and fragile ecosystem is protected. And as Haida people, of course, we have our own historical and cultural, our own history, our own connection to the place we call Skunkinklas. In 2007, the Haida Nation and the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans agreed to manage the seamount together to ensure that this unique and fragile ecosystem is protected. Tsan Inklas was designated as a marine protected area by Canada under the Oceans Act in 2008. The development of the management plan for Tsan Inklas is, is an example of how Haida can work with other governments um, cooperatively managing ecologically and culturally significant marine areas. To raise awareness about the ecological and cultural significance of Sank Inklas. In the spring of 2015, a project was launched by the Haida Nation. Local artists, a Haida composer, and two youth dance groups were brought together to bring the story of Sank Inklas to life. And today we're here to celebrate uh, Sank Inklas Seamount. Uh, with Haida songs, dances, stories, and the unveiling of two masks. It's going to be really interesting for the kids and it's going to make them more involved in our culture and uh, make them involved with dancing and singing. And it really is just a lot of fun, our stories and our dances. Getting familiar with the story for uh, the Bowie Seamount, um, it was just uh, the, the two siblings going out to find this island shrouded in the mist and the idea for them was to go and collect puffin beaks to re-establish their father's wealth. So I, I really connected with that idea of the puffin and um, that's what I wanted to depict for this mask. I did a kind of a ghastly look on his face because he's kind of in awe of uh, what they stumble out upon, which is the, the mass of puffin beaks that was going to bring wealth back to their village. Well, the Haidas and the Niskas had this dispute, and in between that dispute, the wife ended up getting killed. And so the high ranking man. They were really wealthy, so what happened in his mourning and his despair started losing everything because he wasn't doing anything. He was just mourning, and through all of that mourning, the children took it upon themselves that they wanted to bring back that wealth because they heard this story of Puff and Beak Island. And in their traveling, there was a Puffin that came and grabbed the boy's hat and took off in one direction, so they decided they were going to follow that. And then eventually they seen this fog, and then they ended up paddling, and still they could hear all the puffins making noise, and they'd get a glimpse of the puffin that had the hat. And then as they were paddling, they bumped into these rocks. And then as they went and stepped off the canoe, 
it cleared up and they discovered that they were on the Puffin Bird Island there. And as they collected all the beaks they could fill their boxes and canoe with, thinking of how happy they were and how they're gonna look after their family and their people. And once they got home, everybody celebrated once they seen them returning. And then there was even a bigger celebration when they discovered that they did find the island. And they were able to restore their family's name and to share all of their wealth. We can't emphasize enough the recognition of this very special place. Uh, it may be offshore, it may be out of sight, but it holds um, uh, great importance as an ecological, unique area, and obviously of high cultural value. And whilst there may be other marine protected areas designated in Canada, this is the only one that has a cooperative management board that operates um, as does this board. It's been exciting and difficult and challenging, um, but at the end of the day, I really believe with regards to the relationship that we're building with, with the, the management board team that we have in place today is, is a really a significant step in really trying to get joint management on, on many areas and, and management of our, our, our decisions within our territory, and I think that slowly but surely they're starting to understand why we say what we do when we come out to these areas to, to promote who we are as a people. In, in many uh, in our old oral traditions we have many supernatural beings that have settled all throughout Haida Gwaii that our ancestors, our Kunisi, have, have told us about and have passed on and have experienced over the years our, our, our rich history here on, on Haida Gwaii and they're we know of supernatural beings that live under mountains and at creeks and under certain rocks and other important landmarks. And Skunk Kinklas is one of our important supernatural beings who resides under this ancient volcano. It's really a celebration of young people taking a challenge of going and seeking a closure to their family of what was lost and what they're taking back. So it was a challenge for them to grow as people, to get that courage to go and seek that place and to celebrate and share that celebration. With us, it's always sharing everything that we collected as our wealth to share with everybody.